I think because I don't have a pen, um, this will be too hard to do. So we are going to pick up here next time. Happy to answer any questions before you all go. I am on the uh, chapter 15 um, notes, the uh, slide 17, I believe it is, where we're looking at an equilibrium of COCl2 in equilibrium with CO, carbon monoxide, and chlorine gas, Cl2. And we're given the value of the e equilibrium constant um, 2.19 times 10 to the minus 10. And this was a multi-step problem, which I've just now made into one step, so there's a part A. Um, is the following mixture of CO, Cl2, CO, and Cl2 um, at this temperature at equilibrium, and if not, indicate the direction that the reaction must proceed. So let's do a couple things before we solve anything. Looking at K, is this reaction favored or product favored? Reaction favored or product favored? Reaction favored, why? K is small, exactly. Yeah, so we have a, a small value of K, times 10 to the minus 10. So we should have a reactant favored equilibrium. Um, there's, um, so again, if we then look at this multiple choice question, does the reaction pre proceed towards reactants or products? Well, I don't know why I even included this multiple choice. Um, I should have erased it, but it basically, we need to calculate Q in order to determine if we need more reactants or more products, assuming we're not at equilibrium. Um, in order to figure out if we're at equilibrium, what do we do? We calculate Q, right? So um, are the following mixtures at equilibrium, or is this mixture at equilibrium? The first thing we're gonna do is calculate Q. Then we're going to compare Q, the value that we get to for Q to the value of K, and determine if we need to form more reactants or more products. So if you recall, uh, calculating Q, we do that the same way that we calculate K. So for this equilibrium, Q is going to be equal to the concentration of CO times Cl2 divided by the concentration of CoCl2. All of these have stoichiometric coefficients of 1, and so they're raised to the power of 1. Unlike with our kinetics chapter, we can look at the equilibrium, we can look at the stoichiometry, and we can put a power, right? With the rate stuff, we couldn't do that necessarily, unless we knew it was an elementary reaction. Now, if we have our balanced equilibrium, we have to know our stoichiometric coefficients. They are the powers in this K equation. Okay, so oh, let's plug in some values for Q. Uh, concentration of CO, 3.3 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per liter. Concentration of Cl2, 6.62 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per liter. And then the concentration of COCl2 is 2 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. And if I've done my math correctly, when we solve for, we multiply all of that out. Wait. What did I do here? Okay. Well, I've lost my mind in my notes. Um, yeah. Oh, no. No, I didn't. I'm good. Okay. Found it. Okay. So, calculating all of this out, um, we end up with Q equals 1.09 times 10 to the minus 8. And if we compare our value of Q to our value of K, Q is greater than K. 
And so what do we need, what has to happen to a, a achieve equilibrium? Do we need to form more reactants or more products? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that means the concentration of products is greater than the reactants, um, and so we need to form more reactants. Everyone good on that? If Q is less than K, that says that there's more reactants in the current mixture than would be at equilibrium, and so you need to form more products. If they're equal, they're at equilibrium. Wait, but you said form more reactants, so, yeah. so that means that there's more products in this? Yes, right now. Okay. currently, yes. So that means, right, so in this current, with these current concentrations, there's more products in the mixture than expected at equilibrium, okay? So in order to, to achieve equilibrium, to get to equilibrium, we need to form more reactants. Make sense? Ay, 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 okay. <laughs> Which direction does the reaction need to proceed? That's a compare Q to K question. So does the reaction proceed towards the reactants or products? That's where you say, okay, how, can we get, how do we get to equilibrium compared to UK? Yeah, great question. <coughs> All right, anything else before we get? Uh, the question is, uh, when we're at equilibrium, are we, is the number exact or is it close? I would say uh, for the homework problems that you'll see for exam questions, it'll be an exact number or within like 0 0.01 decimal place, uh, within rounding. Um, we're not going to throw you off just by a, little, a small amount. That's not a fair question. Because I don't, I mean, it's a spectrum, right? So it'll either be yes or no. Um, what else? Okay. Okay. Um, so I was saying, uh, we calculated Q. Are you okay with that part, getting to that? Okay. So um, let's go back. In this problem, we found that our Q value is greater than the K, which was 2 times 10 to the minus 10. All right, bring it in, folks. Or I'm going to make you all ask questions. to do to, to achieve equilibrium. So I have a plan for helping you solve any type of equilibrium problem. And even though we're finishing up chapter 15, which is sort of the, the groundwork for equilibrium, we're going to be doing more equilibrium in chapter 16 and 17. Um, so this is sort of a foundational piece that you really need to make sure you understand. So uh, in solving equilibrium, we need to make sure that we have a balanced equation. Oftentimes you are given a balanced equation, but it's always a good idea to, to check that because the stoichiometric coefficients matter, right? Um, if you are asked to solve for equilibrium concentrations, 
you're going to need an ice table. You're going to need some initial concentrations. You may be given an equilibrium concentration as well. But keep in mind, on those ice tables, we're going to include concentration, moles per liter. Okay. Sometimes we'll work in pressures of atmospheres, but for the most part, you're going to see moles per liter. This really matters when we get to um, our next chapter, when we're going to be solving uh, weak acid and weak base equilibria. And we're going to also do uh, reaction tables, which I think we call BCA tables, maybe sometime. So those are different, but we are going to have problems where we're doing both a BCA table and an ice table. So we need to make sure we're using the right units in each one. So ice table, concentration, moles per liter. Okay, so then um, if you don't know which direction the reaction has to proceed to achieve equilibrium, then you need to calculate Q. So what do I mean by that? Let's say you have an equilibrium and you have only reactant concentrations, so you have, if you have two reactants, you have concentrations of both of those and no products. It's a dead giveaway that in order to achieve equilibrium, you have to form more products. But if you have an equilibrium mixture and maybe you have some amount of reactants and some amount of products, then you need to calculate Q to figure out which direction you need to go. And what that tells you then, you know, in our ice table, the change line, right? Um, so we have our initial concentrations. We'll say they're A and B in equilibrium with C. If um, we have an equilibrium where we need to form more reactants than, uh, in order to achieve equilibrium, so far in this class we've only seen where we subtract minus x from the reactant side. But if you need to form more reactants, then minus x is on the product side and plus x is on the reactant side. Does that make sense? So that's why calculating Q can be important. Okay, to figure out which side of X goes on which side of the equilibrium arrows. Um, we need to be able to write the equilibrium expression, which is our K, K equals product of the reactants. Uh, use our ice table, determine the change in equilibrium concentrations, and then um, <coughs> substitute equilibrium concentrations into K. And of course, it depends on what you're solving for. There's so many options here. We can be solving for an equilibrium concentration of a particular reactant or product. We could be solving for K. Um, I guess there's two options. It feels like a lot more. But the nice thing about these um, problems is that you can almost always check your work. So if you're solving for an equilibrium concentration, uh, it's likely that you'll have all equilibrium concentrations of all species. So you can write your K expression, plug that in, and it see if your value of K that you get is equal to the value that was stated in the problem. So there's lots of ways to check your work on these. Okay. Questions before we move on? Yes. 